Hey guys, it's Darwin here with my weekly Q&A to answer more of your questions. If you want to ask a question for next week's Q&A, you can either leave it in the comment box below or send me a video question over to darwinonthetrail at yahoo.com and then next week I'll answer as many as I possibly can. Alright, so let's go ahead and get into this week's first question. What are your thoughts on pack covers? Did they work for you on the AT? So yeah, I did use a pack cover on the AT, and for some of you that are not familiar with what a pack cover is, it's essentially a cover for your pack to help with the rain. It just usually stretches on the outside of your pack and it acts as a guard from any dampness or anything soaking into your pack material. Now the pack cover that I used on the AT in 2015 and 2016 was the z Packs Cuban Fiber Pack Cover. Pretty expensive for what it was, but sometimes those things can be a little bit heavy, so I just went ahead and went with it. And it worked pretty decently, but to be honest, I don't think that a pack cover, any pack cover, ever really does a good job at keeping your pack completely dry. Because even though I had it on there, there were tons of times where in a downpour, my pack would still be soaking wet and things on the inside would be wet as well. Now I did use separate stuff sacks on the inside to keep the important things dry, like my clothes, like my quilt, but a pack cover just, eh, it does an okay job. Now personally, if I was gonna go hike the AT again, I would not use a pack cover. I would use a pack liner. So there's a couple different companies that make a pack liner, which is essentially one big roll top sack that you put inside your pack, then stuff everything in, then roll it down and then shut your pack. Because I know a lot of people that use those out on the trail and they worked awesome. And another thing you can do if you want to save a little bit of money is use a trash compactor bag. They're pretty cheap, they're pretty tough, and they do a great job. And most of them are big enough to fit in like a 60 to 70 liter pack. So that is what I would suggest. Can you please tell me which skull cap you're wearing in the video? So I would assume that you're talking about my beanie here. Um, this thing was actually hand knitted for me by a friend back home in Indiana. She knitted it for me right before we were about to take off in 2014 and do traveling and hike the AT. Not only did she knit this for me, but she also knitted the one that Snuggles wears all the time. It's funny, I have a bunch of different skull caps and beanies. Um, like the one that I use on most of my backpacking trips, which is the Outdoor Research Transcendent Down Beanie. But at the end of the day, this is my favorite and it's the one that I always grab because it's super comfortable. It looks pretty cool and it was handmade for me. Yo, what up Darwin? It's E from Jersey. A um, few questions in regards to showers and baths on the trail. People are taking them at uh, hostels and public churches. Who's supplying the towels? Like, I can only imagine that hotels are giving you towels when you rent a room, but at hostels and churches, I see that REI sells lightweight towels. How do you feel about towels on the trail? Just some thoughts. Love your channel. Keep the videos coming. E from Jersey. All the back. So, yeah, that's actually a really good question and one that I've probably never thought of. Um, there are a lot of places on the AT especially, that will give you a towel when you stay with them. So obviously you would expect a towel from a hotel if you're staying in a hotel on the trail, but most of the hostels that we stayed in also supplied you with a towel. Now, not all of them, but I would say most of them do. I've personally never used a pack towel in any of my gear setups, and I think it's a pretty good idea to have, especially if you think that you're gonna be on a trail where maybe it doesn't have a whole lot of hostels or hotels, but I've just personally never carried one. I've seen a lot of people carrying them in 2015 and in 2016 on the trail, and any of the times that I ever needed a towel and the place that I was staying didn't supply one, I just kind of air dried myself. Or if we were taking like a shower in a campground or something, um, I would take paper towels and just kind of pat myself off until I was dry. But a pack towel would probably be a good idea if you're putting together a kit for a through hike of the AT. What do you think about dehydrating your own food? Have you ever tried it? Um, so yeah, I actually have dehydrated my own food in the past. Uh, last year when I was getting prepared for my through ride of the Arizona Trail, I dehydrated about 50% of the food that I took. I was making my own meals with ramen and mashed potatoes and beans, 
but I was dehydrating certain vegetables to put them in there to give myself a little bit more nutrients. If you wanna check that video out, I'll put a link up here in the corner, and it's pretty much a whole video on me dehydrating my meals and putting those meals together. Now I plan on doing some more dehydrating for my through hike of the PCT next year, but you know, living in a five by eight cargo trailer out in the middle of the woods, it's kind of hard to dehydrate food, but we're gonna be spending a little bit of time at a friend's house in Southern California, so I hope to dehydrate a bunch of vegetables there. What is the oldest piece of equipment that you still use? So I actually had to think about this one for quite a while because I'm a big gear geek. I go through a lot of gear. I'm constantly switching it out, trying to figure out what works best for me at the time. But there are two pieces of gear that I have had for as long as I can remember that I still use to this day. The first one is not necessarily a piece of gear. It's more of a garment and that would be the Copen top that I'm currently wearing. It's just kind of a fleece top. Um, that's a quarter zip. I've had this thing for probably close to six or seven years. I picked it up whenever Snuggles and I were first starting to get back into backpacking, and it's great. I absolutely love it. You'll see it in a ton of my videos, in a ton of my pictures. I am always wearing this thing. It is my go-to piece of clothing when it's kind of chilly outside. I don't take it on long trails as much as I used to, um, but I do wear it like almost every single night at camp. I wear it in town a lot on day hikes. It is definitely my favorite piece of gear and I don't think I could get rid of it. One of these days, the stitchings will probably fall out and I'll just have to get rid of it, but right now it's still going strong. And then the other piece of gear that I would probably say that I've had the longest is my Sea to Summit long handle spork. Again, I've had that thing for about six to seven years and it's been on absolutely every single trip with me. Whether I'm carrying a cook system or I'm going stoveless, I always have that long handle spork with me. Hell, I even use it in camp at night whenever I'm just cooking on our regular stove. I've thought about switching it up to a titanium one. Um, I just don't have the heart to do it. I love that thing and it's always in my pack. Hey Darwin, it's Metro coming to you from the Appalachian Trail. Had a quick question for you. Um, as you are prepping for your upcoming PCT trail through hike, my question for you is how often do you get out on a weekly basis to hike? And when you go out to hike, how, how far do you go on average? I'm looking at like just trying to get a gauge on how often you hike and how far you go. Love your channel, love your videos, keep it up. So I hike um, probably four to six days a week. Every opportunity that I can get, I get out on the trail. As I've said it in the past, going to the gym is a great workout, but there is no better workout and no better training than just getting out on a trail and hiking. Now, where we're at right now, right outside of Flagstaff, we're about 500 feet from the Arizona Trail, so it's super easy for me just to go jump on the trail and do a day hike whenever I want to. Right now, I'm doing hikes between uh, I would say like six to 10 miles almost every single day. Sometimes I go hiking in the morning before I, you know, go run errands and shoot videos and stuff. And a lot of times I do some night hiking. Like last night I had a really good night hike for about eight miles just to get my eyes used to the trail at night without using a flashlight or a headlamp. And even whenever we lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico, most times before work in the morning, I would get up I would drive to the foothills and go hike some of our local trails. I usually couldn't get in that long of a hike, but I would usually hike for at least an hour, and I just treat it like going to the gym. A lot of people get up in the morning before they go to work, they go and hit the gym and lift weights and stuff. I get up and I hit the trail. How often should you backwash a Sawyer Squeeze or any other squeeze filter, and how long should you do it? So I try to back flush my Sawyer as much as I possibly can. Now, even though the Sawyer squeeze filter and most of the squeeze filters out on the market do come with some sort of a syringe or some way to back flush it, I have never carried one of those with me on the trail. In my experience, pretty much any time you come into a town, uh, whether you're at a resupply point, you're staying at a hostel or a hotel, you can usually always find a hiker box that will have one of those syringes in it. I usually just grab it, I back flush the crap out of my Sawyer filter about three times until I get water that's running clear, no more muddy, nasty water, and I just put it back in the hiker box for the next person. And like I said, usually it's on my to-do list for town whenever I get to any town is look for a way to back flush my filter. The more you back flush them and the cleaner you keep them, the better your flow rate will be and the longer the filter is gonna last. Now I know there's a handful of like little attachments and stuff 
that you can get to put on a smart water bottle to use out on the trail, but I've never tried one of those. Like I said, in my experience, there's really never been a time that I haven't gotten to a hostel or a hotel or something and haven't been able to find one of those syringes. Do you have a recommendation for a certain tripod that you bring with you when backpacking? I know you list one in your description that you use for the videos like these, but I'm just curious if you use a different lighter option for actual backpacking slash hiking. So Caleb, there are a ton of different tripods out on the market that are super lightweight, super compact, but the ones that I always use out on the trail are the Joby Gorilla Pods. Now when I'm doing something like a longer distance hike, if I'm on one of the major trails like the Continental Divide or the AT or the Arizona Trail, I'll use the Joby Gorilla Pod Mini. It's super tiny, it weighs barely anything, and it allows me to get really good shots. And then the other one that I use is actually a bigger one, but again, it is a Joby Gorilla Pod. I think it's called the Action Gorilla Pod or something. I don't know, it's red and black. That is the one that I use a lot whenever I'm doing day hikes, if I'm in a national park, where I don't mind adding a little bit of extra weight to my day pack, that's the one that I'll grab. There's one that I've seen that a couple hikers really like. Uh, I think Manfrotto makes it. It's like a little weird ball with uh, three legs on it. That one's also really popular because it's super lightweight and it's super compact, but I personally am a Joby Gorillapod kind of guy. Are you still using a quilt instead of a traditional bag? When you first switched, did you have a problem with it being drafty? How did slash do you deal with that? What's the coldest it's been on a hike and was your quilt warm enough? So David, I have three quilts now. I actually have two enlightened equipment quilts and then one underground quilt. I have a 30, a 20, and a 10. So it all depends on what weather situation that I think that I'm gonna be in. And the coldest that I've had my 10 degree quilt down to was I think a nine degree night and it did perfect. Now I sleep a little bit warmer. Now as far as it being drafty, um, one thing that I don't think that I've ever talked about and what most people don't talk about um, with a quilt is most quilts come with a pad strap. So the quilts have little bitty buckles or little loopholes on the side of the quilt and then they come with an elastic cord that has a connector that clips to that so you can strap the sides of the quilt down to your pad. So as far as a draft, I've never had a draft come in unless I wasn't using my pad straps. And the only time I don't use my pad straps is when it is a lot warmer outside and I don't think that I need them. So I think that that is a big misconception about quilts that they get drafty. So in answer to your question, am I still using quilts? Yes, I am. I don't think that I could ever go back to a traditional bag. I was never really that comfortable in a traditional bag because I always felt so restricted. I toss and turn a lot when I sleep and I sleep on my side a lot. So a quilt just gives you so much more room. It's lighter, it's more multifunctional, and to me, they're just overall better. All right, guys, last question of the week. Okay, so in a previous Q&A, you discussed the big three trails and mentioned some of the smaller trails that you'd like to through hike. So my question is, why don't more people do the smaller ones before taking on one of the big three? Wouldn't that help folks prepare mentally and physically and have a chance to work with their gear before hitting the monsters? So that is a phenomenal question. And funny enough, it's one that I recently had a discussion with another hiker about. Now the big three would obviously consist of the Appalachian Trail, the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Continental Divide Trail. And all of those trails are over 2000 miles. Now, all of the smaller trails would be something like the Arizona Trail, the Colorado Trail, maybe the Florida Trail, which are gonna be right around five to 800 miles. Now, are they smaller? Yeah. Do they take less time to through hike? Absolutely. But the whole comment about them being mentally easier, I don't think so at all. Here's why. The smaller trails do not have as big of a trail community as something like the Appalachian Trail, and there's not as many people hiking those smaller trails. So I think if it's your first time hitting a trail, you're gonna have an easier and better time out on something like the AT versus something like the Arizona Trail because there's less room for error. And what I mean by less room for error is there are more hostels, there's more resupply points, water is more available in sections of the trail, there are more outfitters, so when you go out for the first time, 
if you're out on the AT, you can make more mistakes and learn as you go and develop as a through hiker a lot better than say if you set out on something like the Arizona Trail where there's not a lot of water. There's not a lot of people out there to help lift you up and talk to and kind of kill that loneliness sometimes. There's not a lot of towns to resupply in. So mentally the trails would be much harder because you don't have the type of services and the type of trail community that you have on a trail like the Appalachian Trail or the Pacific Crest Trail, which is why a lot of people choose those two trails as their first trail. And as far as the physical point goes, they're all hard. And if you can hike 500 miles, you can hike 2,000 miles. Now, if you're looking at a smaller trail because of time restraints, yeah, absolutely. Hiking the AZT, hiking the Colorado Trail makes a lot more sense because they are shorter trails. So you can get a through hike in in a smaller time period. But as far as being physically or mentally easy, not at all. So that's just my two cents, but I think that if you're gonna be planning for your first through hike and you have the time to do it, go out and hike the AT. It's a great trail with an awesome trail community and it teaches you a lot about trail life and being a piece of hiker trash. All right guys, so hopefully you had an awesome Thanksgiving. Snuggles and I ate a bunch of Indian food and did a bunch of hiking. So I'd say we had a pretty good one. If you haven't checked it out yet, Snuggles and I recently put together a hiker trash holiday gift guide. So if you're looking for that perfect gift for the hiker trash in your life, I'll put a link in the description box below and you can go check it out for yourself. If you wanna leave a question for next week's Q&A, you can either leave it in the comment box below or, or send me a video question over to Darwin on the trail at yahoo.com and then next week I'll answer as many as I possibly can. If you haven't had a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I've been posting a lot of new photos lately of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on throughout the week, plus some pictures from some past hikes. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. <laughs>